right, John Williamson has taken off where Banjo and Henry left us. Um, the, since 1970, uh, John Williamson has summed up what he thinks about Australia through his music, and it's been an incredible journey. 50 albums. John Williamson, good afternoon. Great to see you, Dennis. That's, nice to be here, mate. You're a prolific recorder. <laughs> yeah, well, there's been a few compilations in there. You know, I didn't count them, actually. The record company did, so... That means you've sold lots and lots of records. If, if there have yeah. been 50 releases, whether they're compilations yeah, or not. In 44 years, I can't really believe it. That's like more than an album a year, of course. And I remember the first performance. Yep. You're on New on Faces. faces. Yeah, yeah. So, do, so do I. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign. Uh, you've also not only got Honest People out, the uh, CD, the 50th, but also the book Hey True Blue. You've always been able to, and it's so evident on the on the Honest People CD, of your ability to gently make comments about our world and our lives. Yeah, um, well, I, I, I think it comes from the folk era. You don't just write a nice song, you know. You've got to have something to say. I guess I'm a bit like that, you know. And uh, it's... It's even there's even a reference, and we'll play it. Uh, even a reference. You're ahead of your time with this one. Uh, with it's all about love. Have a listen to this little bit. Hey, Mr. Putin, you gotta let it go. You come down with an iron fist. What happened to your voice there? <laughs> That's Becky Cole. Isn't yes, it? beautiful yeah. Becky Cole. And uh, uh, that was a. How long ago did you write that? Uh, well, no, well, I, you know, it's fairly recent because uh, I, I watched that uh, uh, Stephen Fry program about where he went around the world and got stuck into all the homophobic nations, and one of them, of course, is Russia. They give them a hell of a hard time, the gay people over there. It was really bit wrong and bad. And, and, but the it, very end of the program, which was a great program, uh, he said it's all about love. And I thought, yeah, it sounds uh, simple. You would think that would be a, written a million years, you know, a million times. But I've, that's a, that's a title for a song. That's a chorus. So you know, I just wrote the chorus and then went from there. And so, like so many of your songs, that one, as you're listening to the CD, um, uh, Honest People, you 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 know it the moment you've heard it once, which is a sign of a good song. Well, that goes back to our era, mate. You know, when when there was hit parades and every song. You could recognise it straight away. In fact, you, the old program managers said they didn't like the first few seconds, they throw it in the bin. So they, they, the song had to be different, whereas I think today they're all trying to be the same or something. I don't know. Are you happy to take some calls? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, if you want to speak with John Williamson, uh, 96 900 693 13 13 32. Um, tell us about the, the, the night Ray Martin asked you to pay tribute to Don Bradman. Uh, yeah, well... Uh, we're, we're old mates, Ray and I, and, he, and uh, he had this privilege of interviewing Don Bradman on, on his program, um, uh, and uh, that was a real coup for him. And he, knowing that I can usually write a song at the drop of a hat if it's a good idea, uh, he said, can you write a song f f for this occasion? And um, so I, I, my ex-wife, Mary Kay, um, her her spinster auntie had a dance with Donald Bradman years ago and she never stopped bragging about it. So the first line was, uh, um, I can't even think how it goes now, Auntie, Auntie Ducky. When Auntie Ducky danced with Donald Bradman, she thought it was the <laughs> highlight of her life and I thought that's got a rhythm to it and away it went. And, uh, and of course I knew, and I asked, actually asked Ray to give me 12 pointers he'd like to hear in the song, you know, the, the wisp of the willow or whatever the, and all those and I can't even remember that. So that's going back a bit, mate. But uh, I, n I never met Sir Don, which is a shame. And I, n and I never wrote to him, sort of asked him what he thought, whereas his son told me it was he preferred that to uh, our Don Bradman. Oh, what's a, what a compliment that is. Mm. Uh, have you sung, I got an email just before one from Belinda, said John Williamson should be singing at the grand final. Have you done an AFL grand final? No, that's one of my bucket list. I'm always available. I've, I've, I've sang at an Anzac Essendon Collingwood game, True Blue, because yes, I remember was, that. obviously there was Anzacs in being taken around the cars. Um, yes, I'd love to, love to, and I'd love to sing True Blue because everyone knows it now, and I want to do it for the Wallabies too because uh, they actually use it in the shed. When you when you wrote True Blue, um, d did you feel at that point that there was something missing from us as a nation? Well, it was a project, once again, for John Singleton, for he had a program called True Blue Aussies when he was having three years off from uh, advertising, and I, he didn't give me much to go on. So I actually just sat down and thought, what is True Blue? And I, I, I'm, 
that was basically, and it was in the early 80s when we were, it was a kind of a recession happening. And so Don't Say You've Gone was meant a whole lot of things there. And, and old Joe up in Queensland was flogging off the case to, to the Japanese. So that that came into the song too, you know, if you sell us out like sponge cake. But the thing is, you, when you write a lyric, you want people to bring their own interpretations into it. So it seems to have worked that way. Um, we've got to get you on that grand final. It's just such an obvious obvious fit. Mm. Well, you know, the crowd knows it now, whoever's listening, um, any of the hierarchy of the AFL. They all know it now, and I can lead it. Everywhere I go, I find that everyone knows it, so it'll be fun. They know it all right. They love it. Uh, 96900693, if you'd like to have a chat with uh, John Williamson, who you hear on this program every, uh, every Monday to Friday. Um, honest people, you sang that here. Yeah, but- I'd forgotten that, but that's great. I'm, I'm pleased because... We're old mates, I'm, I'm pleased. Yeah, well, it's a Victorian song. It was when my uh, an old friend of mine who still lives in Kwambatuk up there in the Mallee, she, last winter she said we, they couldn't get a footy team together. And in a Victorian town, that's the end of it. That's the end of winter, isn't it? That was our, our whole life in winter was Aussie rules. Um, I think they did scratch a team together, but that just threw me into thinking uh, all the wonderful days of my life in that beautiful little town where you didn't have to lock your car and... Yeah, and uh, as and the line in the song says, yeah, everyone was eager to be friendly, and uh, I'm sure there are towns still like that, but it's that kind of uh, community is disappearing. I think the uh, the next thing, the tractor pull, will be gone, <laughs> yeah. or is that still happening? Oh, I think it's still happening. Yeah, I hope it so. It keeps keeps Quamby on the on the map. Time.